Hey guys, I hope you're having an amazing day. Welcome to a new type of video on this channel. Today we will be starting a new city using only curved roads. I'm quite curious to see what kind of city can be built using this rule and what kind of interesting shapes you can come up with for our road layouts. Naturally, I start by expanding the highway by making a quarter of a circle along the outline of the river. If you don't know me by now, I always start my layouts with dirt roads and upgrade them later. Dirt roads are cheaper to build and to maintain, which helps at the starting stage of a new city, where money is important. They can also handle traffic perfectly at this point because there's not a lot of cars circulating in the city. I'm already having some ideas here on how we can later landscape the river to perfectly outline the highway. I then build another quarter of a circle branching off the highway. This will be an avenue and the main arterial that connects the highway to the first residential neighborhood of the city. Here you can already see that I'm using straight roads, so to be clear, I allow myself to use straight roads for guidelines, as long as they are deleted later. The final road layout of the city being composed of only curved roads, that's the rule and the challenge. I then proceed to make a multitude of circular shapes to reshape the highway and I use a lot of guidelines to make sure that all the curves I make are symmetric and match with each other. Imagine a perfect circle cut into sections and then use those sections to create a curved line. That's pretty much what I'm doing here. At this point I also have to be a bit careful so I don't run out of money. I am using some mods, for example I have all 25,000 log from start but the majority of the gameplay is vanilla. Information about the map I'm using, or the theme, can be found in the video description or somewhere in this video itself. It is time to start building the layout for industry and I do another quarter of a circle to represent the main arterial for this district. This map only has one regional highway access, so traffic management will be tricky as the city grows. Because of this, the industrial sector will be the closest district to the highway exit, so trucks don't have to cross the entire city when importing or exporting goods. I then build the neighborhoods themselves. These will be concentric circular patterns outlining the main avenue. For the collectors, aka the roads that connect local roads to arterial roads, I build this wavy pattern. I like to build my stuff in a clean slate, so I clear all the trees inside the districts. Yes, I could use a tree brush mod for this, but some of you seem to think it's particularly satisfying to watch the trees being removed one by one. This doesn't really bother me at all, except for those small bushes that are represented by a single pixel on your screen when you are zoomed out this far. I start building the local roads for the industrial district and here I use the exact same methodology I use on the residential district, with concentric and smaller circular roads where the factories will be. Ok, so I think I'm done with the initial road layout, we have uh, quite a decent amount of zoning space and that should be enough to get us going and we also have $30,000 in the bank so that should be enough for us to put the initial services like power and water so yeah that's pretty much what I wanna do next so I'm gonna go to the power and I think for this I'm gonna go uh, with the wind turbines now usually you should place these in a location that is very windy for example like this blue area here where it gives you an estimated production of uh, 80 megawatts but because I don't want to waste uh, so much money on power lines I think I'm gonna put them here for the time being and I will just relocate them um, in the future so I'm gonna build a couple of them neatly outlining the roads that we have and that should be enough uh, for water I think I'm gonna go with a regular water tower that I'm gonna put here and again later on as we expand um, further perhaps I can exchange this 
with a regular water pumping station, but for the time being, I just want to get the initial services going on as closely to the road layouts as possible, so I don't spend that much money on pipes and also power cables. Another thing that we are missing is sewage, so I'm gonna go for this inland water treatment plant and I'm gonna put it right here, right next to um, the wind turbines. And I think this is a good place for it, perfect. And I can now start laying off some pipes. So for this, I wanna go uh, underneath the roads and for that, I'm gonna disable the guides. And I think I wanna go through this main road and use a cost of 300 to make everything uniform. Okay, that's enough to provide water to the entire industrial sector. Now let's do the same for the residential district. Okay, so that should be enough for now. And we're pretty much covered for water, but now we need to place some power lines and we need to be careful because we're really running out of money. So I'm gonna make the segments as short as possible. I could have actually saved a bit more money if I went with a more direct route, but uh, well, what's done is done. That shouldn't be a problem. Now, before zoning the first residential and industrial, I actually want to go to the budget panel and decrease the budget of everything to 50% because we won't be needing uh, everything running at full capacity with the starting city and that will help us save a bit more money. And with this, we can now start zoning some stuff. And we have quite a generous amount of um, roads here, so we can zone quite a large area. I think I'm going to zone this entire thing. So those will be the first residential blocks. For commercial, I will actually want to zone my commercial right next to uh, this avenue. But while it's still a dirt road, I'm going to hold off before doing that and I'm gonna place it over here instead for the time being and I will design this later on. Now moving to industrial, you're gonna do the exact same thing, this entire area is suitable for industry. I also need to make a small modification to the road network so as you can see the inbound road, the, the highway that brings uh, people to the city is not connected to anything uh, so we need to take care of that so for the time being i'm just gonna make a simple dirt road to solve this issue and i think we have money for that and i'm gonna make a small curved road here at an angle over here so that will allow people to cross this road and get into the industrial sector and i'm gonna do the same with this road as well so something like this and of course in the future this will all become their own junctions with their own dedicated interchanges but for the time being this is more than enough to handle the incoming traffic but anyway i think that's all we can do for now so let's play the simulation After the first houses and factories are built, I could already see that those wind turbines are going to run out of capacity quickly, so I adjust the budget. In the meantime, the first residents move in and the city starts making a profit by this point. So we can comfortably sit back now and wait to accumulate more money we can use to expand the city even further. Upon reaching the first city milestone, we get a small financial boost and we also unlock taxes, which I then proceed to raise for a higher income. At the moment, citizens can tolerate taxes up to 12% before complaining, so that's the number we'll set for the time being. I don't usually upgrade dirt roads this early, but I do upgrade the segment of the arterial to an avenue so I can start zoning the first real commercial block there. Because the avenues are thicker roads than normal roads, if I zoned commercial on the dirt road first and upgraded the road later, it would have destroyed all the buildings which could have messed the RCI demand and I would have to rezone the entire area. I then start expanding the industrial layout as we've just ran out of space for factories and jobs will be in high demand shortly. Also, when reaching the first city milestone, certain services like trash will start to become a necessity, so I need to prepare a dedicated space in the industrial layout to accommodate landfills before this becomes a problem. 
I'm building this circle at the center of the industrial district and I'm still not sure what I'll do with it. Perhaps place a special building there, like the statue of industry. Or maybe just a regular service building like a power plant or a bus depot. I placed the city's first landfill and we should be covered for trash for the time being. Look at them go. The city is booming by this point and demand for residential is through the roof. So I expand the residential layout. I deleted those temporary commercial buildings in the process. I don't connect it directly to the highway because that would mess up the traffic flow that I have planned of course. And I also leave a decent gap in case I want to build a cycling or a pedestrian pathway that connects the residential district to the industrial district. I use the same wavy patterns for consistency and I also make a small gap in the middle of the residential block where we'll be putting services like police, firefighting, medical care and schools. Upon reaching the next milestone at 950 residents, we unlock districts, which is something that I want to use on these residential districts specifically, as I want to give it its own theme. The theme I'll be using will be the European Suburbia, which can be obtained in a content created pack on Steam if you're playing on PC. I'll leave a link to it in the video description. As I continue to progress on the city, I can already see that power is going to become an issue soon, as wind turbines are placed in a windless area and are producing less power than they could for the cost they're giving us. And I'm also running out of space, so I'll have to soon relocate them elsewhere or build a proper power plant. Crime is also starting to become an issue, so I build the first police station. I usually place these services not immediately after they're unlocked, but when there's actually demand for it. The only exception is education. Citizens take a long time to get educated, so this service can usually be placed earlier. I'm still not upgrading zone industry and commercial, so there's not really a demand for educated citizens. So I can hold off placing the first elementary school for a little longer. I expand the residential district theme little by little, because when a new theme is applied to existing buildings, they are automatically destroyed, and losing all my residential all of a sudden would impact the stability of the city. After adding more industrial, redirect some power cables and stabilizing the residential district, I upgrade all arterial roads to avenues. These will be the main roads people will drive through when moving between districts inside the city. While working on the residential district, I noticed the city is experiencing its first fire, so I placed the first fire station next to the police station. While I'm at it, and because we have a good amount of cash, I also build the first medical clinic nearby. Once again, I ran out of space for factories, and I need to expand the industrial district. Instead of repeating the same circular pattern I've been using, I wanted to break the pattern somehow and make something a bit more interesting. After making an additional circle segment parallel to the avenue and landscaping the terrain to make everything flat, I made a series of guidelines to divide the road even further. The nodes that we had so far allowed us to divide the road into three equal parts, and I wanted to double that to have six equal parts. So I made a series of straight lines to find the middle points at the intersection of opposing lines, and made subsequent perpendicular lines to connect the circle, and that gave us a perfectly segmented road. I then deleted all the guidelines and started building the pattern for this road layout. I used a combination of circular roads all connecting to the same point to create this layout with an outline that resembles a flower or a sun. Of course, I deleted all the trees in the area, one by one. I connected this new road system to the avenue via the new points that were calculated while, of course, repeating the same wavy pattern for the collector roads. I then make a few adjustments to the layout to make it look a bit better and more organic and, of course, to remove all the straight roads. I provide power and build a small section of water pipe network and zone the first factories in this newly added district. I went back to the residential district to expand it a bit further and while trying to level the terrain I was reminding of how costly landscaping is in the vanilla game. 50,000 gone in an instant. 
It's insane how raising a small section of the land by 3 meters, or 10 freedom units for you Americans, costs almost as much as building a geothermal power plant. I might install the extra landscaping tools mod that make landscaping free, but for the time being I'm rolling with the vanilla tools only. Anyway, as you might have guessed by now, this entire residential area will be a huge circle. At the center of it, I can either make a park area, a monument, or something to make traveling easier, like a train station. I expand the road layout, upgrade the avenues, build the wavy collectors, pipe everything down and expand the district, and I prepare everything so I can start zoning in this new extension. Alright guys, so this is pretty much what we have so far. The city is progressing at a very healthy pace. We have more than 200,000 in the bank and we're making a profit of 2,500 per week, which is very, very good. And because of that, I've already went to the budget panel and I normalized the budget for everything and put it at 100% because we don't need to be nitpicking on, on cents anymore. I've already done some things and placed some buildings, so for example I've placed the first elementary school of the city, so we start building on that education. We also built the first cemetery because we're starting to have the first dead bodies in the city, so I've pretty much taken care of. I have built a couple more landfills because we were having um, a trash situation, so this landfill was already full, so I've built two more additional landfills to cover up for them and I've also built a couple of recycling centers. Eventually I will want to empty and delete all the landfills because I want solutions that actually get rid of the trash. I have also built a proper power plant, so this is a coal power plant because our wind turbines were pretty much at the limit and I'll have to relocate them pretty pretty soon because they are pretty much underperforming and look what I've done also so I have actually drawn some districts for the industrial sectors that we have so that everything is neat and organized we are also starting to have our first issues with traffic so as you can see we have um, a bit of a backlog here at our main highway so the next step if i were to continue this city would be to upgrade all of these roads to um, more decent roads so for example roads that allow for more speed so that we would actually start having some people uh, using this road and connect and get into the city via this avenue and not having everything converge at this joint which is causing a little bit of stress and I would also transform this into the city's first proper highway interchange. Which leads me to my next point, which is the continuation of this city. So if you have enjoyed this video and want to see the city progress and you're curious to see how it would turn out in the future, please let me know, show your support in this video, and I might consider doing a Let's Play series on this map. As you might have seen by the thumbnail of this video, I already have some ideas of the direction I want this city to take, where I to continue it. I think a curved road only is a very interesting challenge and can potentially create some very interesting results for road layouts. My time is quite limited, but I am willing to make a video once in a while for this particular city, until we fill out the entire map or until City Skylines 2 comes into play. Because apparently that's going to be a thing and just like many of you I'm actually very anxious and excited for it but yeah it's up to you guys but yeah that's pretty much it for me today I hope you have enjoyed this video thank you so much for watching it all the way until the end it means a lot to me if you want to support this channel even further you may even consider becoming a channel member by clicking the join button below I'm also considering creating a patreon for this channel with exclusive and unique benefits, but for that I need to get the frequency of uploads in this channel up to pace. But anyway, that's enough rambling from me today, thank you so much for watching, hope to see you next time, and as always, have fun!